Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash I don't work here lady, so sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. Appears I meet the requirements. Welcome to Boxmart, I'm the guy in the black scrubs in a lanyard that says FBI crime scene do not cross attached to a badge with not this place clearly named. Never mind, I'm with my wife and kid. Twice I wander off to grab something we skipped off a car. Twice randoms asked me where to find things. Frozen veggies, frozen seafood section, both oddly placed in my opinion. Both times, um, I'm not too sure, I don't work here and I tried to avoid this place, sorry. And we go on. Now, I'm reaching atop the high shelf to get a meal replacement drink because I often need to not feel hunger pain while not having time to properly handle it. I'm reading the label and chatting with wifey about it. Spidey sense fails me. Wife looks up behind me a couple times and I don't register that I've applied for a new job. She tugs my sleeve and clears a path for Karen, saying, Scooch over babe, I think she needs in. And I move while turning and say, sorry, lost in the label. My application has been accepted. I'm hired and start my new position 15 seconds ago. I receive a verbal warning for conduct immediately. When you're done messing around, I need you to show me where this irrelevant item is. Your useless kids just pointed and sent me the wrong way. Took about 10 full seconds of blinking, thinking and checking my outfit to realize all you need is a lanyard of any kind to get a job here. Coincidentally, it takes the same amount of time for a wild Karen to ignore all the signs present and become enraged at not having their demands met with a groveling, are you useless too? Let's go, I need this irrelevant item today. I give wifey a good solid kiss, she blinks and stares confused. Be back in a sec beautiful, be good for mummy buddy. Kiddo doesn't think much but wifey catches on. Really? Okay then, have fun. I check my badge again just to see if the ignition kicks on for Karen appears to run on steam and the coal fire is heating up. I'm pretty new but we'll find it, right this way ma'am. She made it down four aisles that most definitely wouldn't have what she wanted before mentioning my incompetence. I can't see why they'd put you in charge. I can't help but agree. I'm right there with you ma'am, seems like a major oversight. She follows through pet food, by the fish and through shoes, but draws the line at electronics. I'm looking for this irrelevant food item, why would you take me here? There's no food back here at all. It's been fun, but I'm bored and she's either gonna get the point shortly or never. Yeah, you're probably right, maybe we should get someone that works here. Should we try at the register? They can probably call a manager from there. Looks like the at will employment in my state kicked in. She walked off toward the food and I haven't received next week's schedule. I'm not hurt though, the pay was terrible. I really like how that guy wrote that story, we need more of this guy please. <laughs> he waited in line for this ridiculous flex. I'm an author on a book tour. I'm in a big chain bookstore sitting at a table with a stack of books in front of me and beside a 7 foot tall reproduction of my book cover. I'm chatting with someone while signing their book and there are 3 people in line behind them. It's my first book so 3 people in line is huge for me. I'm enjoying the heck out of it and I'm working my hardest to make sure everyone is having a great time. And they mostly are. Mostly. I start to pick up an impatient vibe from the man at the end of the line. He's kind of huffy, looking around a lot and keeps trying to make eye contact with me as I'm writing a somewhat lengthy dedication for the person at the front. 
The front person asks if we can take a photo together. I say, of course, because I am so not used to anyone wanting to take a picture with me, and I'm totally an attention hog. This really sets Grumpy Man off. Really? He barks. I'm trying my best to not be mad at Grumpy Man because he's in a line to buy my book. Maybe he's had an awful day. Maybe he's late for dinner. Maybe his parking meter ran out five minutes ago and he has so many parking tickets that they'll tow his car. Who knows? So I ask the other people in line if it's okay for this gentleman to jump ahead, since he seems to be pressed for time and everyone is cool with it. I motion for him to come on up. He plops a bag down on the signing table, pulls out three copies of Jetty Lee's Big Book of Base, and says, I need to return these. Oh, oh no. I put on my best apologetic smile. I'm so sorry for the confusion, I say, gesturing at my stack of books and the giant sign beside me. I'm the author of this book and I'm here to sign copies of it today. Do I look like I care? I need to return these, he shouts. For sure, I get that, I say. I just don't know how I can help you. I don't work here. I'm just visiting this store to sign my book. I point towards the cash desk about 20 feet away and say, I'm sure that the awesome people who work at this store will be happy to help you. I stood in this line. I need you to help me, he snaps. I'm pretty convinced that he's not listening to me. I'm so sorry about that confusion. It makes sense. There was a line of people. You figured it was a line for the cash, and you stood in it. But it turns out that it was a line to get my autograph. The good news is that there's no line at the cash. I point again towards the actual cash. The other people in line are having a great time watching this show, and a few people have come creeping over from the coffee shop attached to the bookstore to get a better view. Cut this author BS, shouts Grumpy Man, and get me your manager. I stand up very slowly. I pick up a copy of my book from the stack and flip to the about the author page. I hold it up beside my face and make the same smirking grin that I'm wearing in the headshot printed in the book. The visual aid seems to have worked because Grumpy Man grabbed his three copies of Jetty Lee's Big Book of Base and Toddler stomped his way over to the actual cash. That's a great story from that guy, and I hope his authoring career goes well, because I'm pretty sure it's quite tough to be an author nowadays. But I'm really confused about why that guy was trying to return three books of the same one. Did, like, three random people buy them for him? Like, maybe for his birthday? <laughs> I think it's the lanyard. A few days ago, I was doing a little bit of shopping at the local chain pharmacy while my husband helped my elderly father find medications. So I decided to look at the hair color. Since I was in a bit of a rush and I have terrible memory, I was looking pretty closely at the boxes, picking them up and looking at my phone for the online reviews to see if I wanted to try this color or that. I hear an excuse me, and turn to my left and see an angry looking older lady, which after years of retail in my 20s puts me into overly perky helper mode. I ask her if I was in her way, to which she asks if I can help her find some kind of drugstore item. I politely tell her, I'm sorry I don't work here, that I'm just looking for hair dye. She points to my lanyard and says, in a not-so-nice tone, Well, you sure look like you do. Also, I was in street clothes, so nothing would really scream employee. I then pulled said lanyard out of my shirt, smiled and said, Oh, that's just my heart monitor. Neat, isn't it? She just walked away without an apology, but I wasn't too upset. 
I'm sure even after all these years, I still give off a can I help you vibe, and I assume to some people it would look like I was taking inventory. Some of these stories where they say, oh, and then they just walked off, really confuse me. Like, at least you could say, oh, sorry about that, and then walk off. But no, they just like look at them and then just say nothing and walk off. It's so weird. For a second time in under a month, I'm mistaken for a hotel employee. I work in a large office complex that is attached to a large hotel. As I was going on my daily walk to get away from my small office, I walked through the hotel lobby. I had my headphones on, listening slash watching to the impeachment hearing. As I passed the registration desk, a woman stops me and asks for help with her luggage. I pulled out a headphone and nicely pointed her towards the desk. Yes ma'am, you can ask one of them to help you. I'm in a rush, and seeing as you're not helping anyone else, you can help me. She flings her suitcase handle in my direction, somewhat roughly, and I don't grab a hold so it falls to the floor. It's a hotel lobby so it's loud. Are you crazy? No ma'am, and I also don't work here. At that point, an employee, dressed in a hotel business uniform, slacks, Oxford, blazer and hotel name, versus I, who am dressed in a dress and heels with a different company employee badge hanging off of my belt, jogs up to us to see what's going on. Your employee refused to help me and threw my luggage down on the ground. The worker, not my manager, Ma'am, this lady doesn't work here, but I'd be happy to help you with your luggage. I start to walk off because even though I'm ticked, I know the situation is handled. But no, Karen raises her voice loudly about how she has never been treated this way and expects more from this hotel chain, and she's a rewards member with a zillion points or whatever. I hear her screeches fade away as I'm walking away from the lobby into the next tower. I honestly don't know what made Karen think I worked there. There were dozens of people in that lobby. The last hotel in which I was mistaken for an employee was simply a racially motivated event. I'm a Hispanic female, but I can't assume this instance was the same. On my way back through the lobby to head towards my office, the employee with her manager spotted me and apologized for the scene. They asked me if I was a guest and I told them I worked in the attached office complex. They offered me a gift certificate good for a lunch at their hotel restaurant, but I thanked them and refused. My last mistaken career identity event last month earned me an entire comped weekend and I didn't want to be greedy. Yeah, again though, even if they did work there, just throwing your bag at them, it's, oh, it's a bit rude. A little different, but I hope it counts. I work at a massive book selling company that I'm sure many of you could identify. I tend to go in on my days off and grab books. Lately, I've been going in more because they increased our employee discount, and since we sell toys, vinyls, and other things, I have been getting some Christmas shopping done while I'm not working. Anyway, we also have an ample amount of return shoppers. Not too many, but enough that they start to recognize us, and we can usually recognize them. I was doing some shopping a few days ago on my day off, getting a graphic novel and some biographies for friends and family, when Lady comes up to me. I'm sort of squatted down on my feet in the biography section, trying to find a specific book, when I hear her say, Excuse me, you work here, right? I tell her I do, but not that specific day, and tell her that I could let her know if I know where to find what she's needing. She lists off an author whom I have heard of, but can't precisely pinpoint where the book would be, as he tends to write psychological thrillers, mystery, and the like, and that could put him in a few places. 
I didn't want to point her in a direction just to be wrong, so I advised her to either check fiction and then go up to the customer service desk or skip the middleman and go straight up to the desk to get verification and then led straight to the right place. She wasn't having any of it. She seems a little taken aback by the fact I would say such a thing and asks me why I wouldn't just go look it up for her on one of the computers. I don't use the computers when I'm not working. I'm just a customer right now, so technically I can't. Yes, but you know how and it would make this all so much easier. The customer service is just right there, and there should already be someone at the computer. I know they'll be happy to help you. Fine, I'll go up there, but I'll make sure to get a manager while I'm up there. What is your name? It's OP. I hadn't done anything wrong, and she would see my name tag if she ever came back in, so I figured, why lie? She gives a nice entitled smirk and heads in the direction of the customer service desk. I found the biography I was looking for pretty soon after that and started to make my way towards the front to check out. At that time, she's being led to section by one of the managers. She points at me and says, That's the girl I was telling you about. I hear my manager go, Yes, I know who OP is, I hired her. I heard her call me something along the lines of lazy, and my manager reiterated that I was, in fact, a customer at that time. I didn't really stay around long enough to hear the conversation finish, and it may not have. Next time I work with said manager, I'm going to get all the dirty details, if any. No, no, it's true guys, if you work in customer service, you only work in customer service. There's no free time allowed. You have to work 24-7. <laughs> Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.